So in this video, I want to just briefly show you how to record a macro in Excel. Uh, in my opinion, if, especially if you're new to macros in Excel or any other Office program, this is by far the easiest way to get started and automate some things you do in these tools and save yourself a lot of time. So here's just a quick demo of this. I have just a little bit of data here and you see it's formatted. Um, it has bold red font here and some highlighting here and some conditional formatting here in column C. And so uh, if you have to do this, you know, same kind of formatting to data over and over and over day after day or week after week, then you can write a little macro to do all the formatting for you. And um, you don't really have to know anything about writing a macro. You can just uh, turn on the recorder, do it, turn off the recorder, save the macro, and then you're set to go. So here's some blank data, um, and I want to just format it. So the first thing we do is turn this on. Now, I'm using Office 2007. Um, you can do all this in older versions of Office, but um, it'll look a little bit different. So. Uh, if you don't have 2007, you'll have to figure out where all the right buttons are. But in 2007, uh, you go to the Developer tab. Um, if you don't see that, you go to this Office button here and Excel Options. And right in this Options window, there's this thing, Show Developer Tab in Ribbon. So make sure that's checked if you don't see the tab. All right, so here's the Developer tab. Uh, and right up here, then you see this button for recording a macro. So I'm going to just press that. It brings up a little box and says what would you like to call it. So I'll call it say formatting. You can give it a shortcut key. So um, let's say uh, control T will run this macro. Now um, you want to make sure you're using a shortcut that you don't use for other things. So this will overwrite any other um, behavior for control T in this workbook. So um, be sure you, don't, you um, don't overwrite something you use otherwise. Uh, you can also save it into this workbook, a new workbook, or your personal macro workbook. If you save it in the personal macro workbook, it'll be always available to you um, on this machine. Uh, but if you save it with the workbook, it'll only be there when you open the workbook. The nice thing about that, though, is if you sa share it with others, they'll have it if you just share the workbook with them. Anyway, so I'll have it as attached to this workbook. Okay, so now we just do some of these things. I'm not sure I remember exactly what that other one looked like, but let's say we change this to be red and a little bit bigger and maybe bold. And there was some highlighting here. I won't do all of this. Um, and then there was some conditional formatting here. So I'll highlight those and say we'll highlight cells greater than zero. Well, actually, zero. Let's do it that way. Okay, I think I did it the other way. I think I highlighted negative ones. Nonetheless, um, that's all you need to do. Uh, so now, assuming we're done and we've formatted it the way we want it, then we can um, stop the recording. Okay, so now to test it, uh, we can go to another blank sheet and hit Control T, and it does it. Uh, the other thing you can do to run macros is go again to the Developer tab, Macros, and you can see it lists this formatting macro so we could press run and it would it would execute that okay so you can see that it just executed everything we wanted just as we wanted it um, now sometimes you want to edit these macros uh, so to do that you have to go into the visual basic editor so again on the developer tab there's this visual basic um, icon that launches the editor you can also press alt f11 so I'll press that and here it is, and you can see that book1.xls is the workbook that I was working in. And down here under Modules, there's a Module 1. I'll double-click that. And this is the macro that got saved. And so you, you know, even without knowing exactly what it's doing, you can kind of see that this one picked um, 
two cells, B1 and C1, and change the color. Um, this one did the, with the same thing, change the size, and also somehow switched it to bold. Oh, that's down here. Okay, so this one changed it to bold. And then, um, you know, you can just go section by section and follow everything I did. So now we can actually edit this. If, for example, um, we wanted that one font to be, say, 32 points instead of 18, we could just change that. And now if we go back to the worksheet, um, the workbook, in fact, we can click this little icon here. It will bring up Excel. We can go to another blank set of data and hit Control T, and you see now we got this bigger font. So you can actually make some minor changes um, to those recorded macros, uh, even again without necessarily knowing everything that it's doing. Um, if you practice these macros a little bit, you get to where you can write that code without the recorder. But um, even now, anytime I do something new, oftentimes I'll record it first and see what the language looks like, and then go from there. So that's pretty much how you record macros. It's pretty straightforward and quite handy for saving work when you have to repetitively do a series of tasks time after time. Thanks.